After winning World War I, Greece gained this from the Treaty of Sevres, leading to the Greco-Turkish War, which Greece lost. Their Anatolian ambitions of reviving Byzantium were crushed, receiving this from the Treaty of Lausanne, causing them to struggle during the interwar period. At the start of World War II, they were invaded by Italy and Germany, and occupied by the Axis powers, ending any hope for global prominence. But don't get down, you were 23,000 Byzantines, and the 90% who haven't subscribed yet. History was forever changed during the Great War, as Greece joined earlier and was given Cyprus. After winning the war, they defeated the Turks taking these lands. Many white immigrants, led by the Tsar and the Romanov family, repopulated this area, fleeing the Soviets after the Civil War. Greece transitioned to the Empire of Romania in 1928, later recognized as Byzantium in the West. Hellenic culture and language became known as Romaic. Byzantium then joined the Little Entente, aligning itself with France. The empire modernized in the interwar period and their population boomed. Czechoslovakia was partitioned at the Munich Agreement in 1938, and World War II began in 1939. France fell in June 1940, isolating the Little Entente. The alliance was reorganized in the Samakia, an orthodox monarchist faction, banning opposing parties, centralizing power among their respective monarchs. In July, Romania submitted to Soviet demands, ceding Bessarabia and northern Bukovina to prevent war. Click here for part one to see more details. In October, the Axis invaded Yugoslavia, who was supported by Romania and Byzantium. The campaign was brutal and slow. Bulgaria joined the Axis, allowing them to push deeper, but were curb stomped within a few months by the Samakia and partitioned. Simultaneously, Vichy France and Germany backed a Turkish fascist coup, creating a nationalist government to invade Byzantium. The superior Byzantine army demolished the Turks by December, taking huge chunks of Anatolia, reducing the Turks to a small puppet state. Over 5 million people were forcefully resettled. Byzantium continued onward into Vichy Levant. Strong military alliances would have been crucial for the Eastern Roman Empire's survival, and I was recently reading this article reporting on American allies with Japan and the Philippines in the Pacific. Using today's sponsor, Ground News, I found a breakdown of 43 articles covering this topic from across the globe. Using the Ground News extension, I can quickly see the bias and click for full coverage of the story. You can view a summary from different political viewpoints to scope out any key differences and similarities in their coverage. So for this story, the headlines seem relatively similar, as they are all calling this a defensive move. On the right-hand side, you see a detailed analysis of the topic. Coverage details give the simplest political breakdown. The bias distribution shows where each article tends to skew. Ground News uses three independent fact-checkers to quickly give you an assessment of the reporting quality from each source. You can view a detailed graph of the ownership and hover to see more info on each. Ground News also is a mobile app that brings many of these amazing features to your phone. Go to ground.news slash Videntis for a 40% off their unlimited access Vantage plan, the same one I use. For just $5 a month, you can better understand the world and stay up to date on the news you care about, so sign up today with Ground News to take advantage of this amazing offer. Now, back to the video. Italy launched a naval invasion of Byzantium in 1941, fighting a series of indecisive battles with heavy casualties, but the invasion was prevented. The Yugoslavs were on the brink of collapse, so the Qatar Georgeviches fled to Byzantium alongside 400,000 soldiers and 2 million Serbs, before Germany destroyed the kingdom. Italy pushed to invade Greece, but Germany signed an armistice with Byzantium and Romania, shifting towards Operation Barbarossa. The Balkans were partitioned, Vichy France sold their holdings in the Levant as Britain was about to take them, the Axis recognized the Anatolian changes, and Romania began supplying Germany with oil. Byzantium strengthened ties with Armenia and Kurdistan, ceding borderlands. In May, the Anglo-Iraqi War commenced after the Axis backed Rashid Ali al gailanis Arab nationalist coup, overthrowing the British puppet government. Byzantium, Kurdistan, and Assyria sided with Britain as the war quickly ended. Iraq was partitioned, and the Byzantine puppet state of Mesopotamia was created, while the old government was reinstated. The Axis were furious, but turned a blind eye, wanting to draw Byzantium into a war with Russia. On June 22nd, the Germans invaded the USSR, catching them off guard. Romania was offered Bessarabia and North Bukovina if the Iron Guard was legalized, but Romania declined. On July 18th, after pressure from the white immigrants, Byzantium sent 600,000 men, mainly Russians, to take Crimea, well ahead of the Germans. 
the Byzantines besieged Sevastopol with 200,000 men and secured the peninsula before pushing into Ukraine and Kuban, forcing Soviet soldiers to retreat faster. In Iran, Reza Shah refused to remove the Germans and was replaced with Crown Prince Mohammad Reza Halavi after the one-week-long Anglo-Armenian-Soviet invasion. Armenia and Assyria took borderlands, while Britain and Russia created spheres of influence. The Byzantine force received Ukrainian support, with the Holodomor still fresh in their minds. Kherson, Rostov, and Krasnodar quickly fell. The Soviets regrouped and crushed the Byzantines at Voroshilovgrad. Constantinople had hoped the expedition could topple the Bolsheviks and reinstate the Romanovs. But Voroshilovgrad ended these dreams. German troops reached Ukraine in September, but focused on the Soviets. Sevastopol finally fell in November, giving Byzantium all of Crimea. The Battle of Moscow and Leningrad began, and the fresher German troops captured Moscow after three months. Britain feared Soviet collapse was imminent as their supply lines were destroyed. With the winter coming, the Byzantine forces set up defenses. Byzantium mobilized another 2 million men and began negotiations with both sides, but found issues with the German regime and the Soviets. Churchill received support for his Danubian Federation, but Byzantium demanded Palestine, crucial for domestic Orthodox propaganda. Additionally, Ethiopia would take Eritrea and Somalia from Italy. The two nations had built a strong brotherhood following World War I. Byzantium wanted to help build them into a new Japan, and this would cement Constantinople as a protector of Orthodox states. The Byzantines would only withdraw back to Crimea and the coast of Kuban, steep terms for Russia, which would be humiliated by resigning these lands, so refused, collapsing negotiations. In the midst of parley, the Germans besieged Stalingrad, trying to cut off the Soviets from the Caucasus oil fields. Germany promised neutrality should Byzantium invade Italy, who had proved themselves incompetent and permit them to take all of North Africa. The Romans showed themselves far more capable than Italy had and would be a stronger ally. Constantinople dictated the war's outcome. If they joined the Axis, their reinforcements would win Barbarossa for Germany. If they joined the Allies, they could annihilate the Germans. Hence, the future rested in the hands of the Roman Basileus. 1.3 million soldiers moved into Crimea, awaiting orders, panicking the Soviets. The troops initiated mass migration to their Slavic collaborators, Russians, Cossacks, Ukrainians, and Poles, south to Anatolia. Debate was fierce in Constantinople, as many whites wanted to fight the Reds, but Germany made clear the Tsar would not be reinstated following their victory. They reopened talks with Russia, sending harsher terms. Russia relented, signing the secret Chersonesus Accord in July of 42. The Black Sea would become a Roman lake once more. The Carthaginian terms were designed to induce a war with the Soviets in the future, placating the Byzantine Russians. Romania and Byzantium invaded the Axis without warning. The Byzantine navy cut behind them in Africa, seizing Tripolitania and Serenica, while Romania moved into Bessarabia. Africa became a rout, and the rest of Libya was handed to France, their main western ally, with the Axis completely out in December. Concurrently, their troops moved, inflicting crushing blows on the Germans, enabling massive Soviet counterattacks. Germany obliterated themselves and the Soviets by Operation Barbarossa. 16 million people fled during the campaign, 3 million of them receiving free land in Anatolia under the Christian anti-communist Byzantines. The Germans were pushed out of Moscow in May of 43 and Stalingrad in June, while the successful Battle of Sicily began, lasting six weeks, forcing Germany to divert troops out of Russia, leading to another Soviet wave of counterattacks. The exhausted Germans were slowly driven back by the Greco-Soviet assault. On July 25th, the Italian government was overthrown. By August, Germans arrived in Italy and the Balkans, stabilizing the front before Italy dropped out of the war in September. Deposed Yugoslav king Peter II called on the Serbs to rebel against the Croatians and Germans, inciting mass partisan efforts, destabilizing the region, allowing the Byzantines to push in. Ethiopia pushed out the last Italians in October with British support. Hungary saw all was lost and tried to make a separate peace, but Germany effectively took over their government. Romania, Yugoslavia, and Byzantium agreed to place Otto von Habsburg as a king of the Danubian monarchy, which would join the Symmachia, which would not align itself with the West, as they believed Western coups were more likely to overthrow them than communists. 
Budapest fell to Romania in May of 44, ending the nationalist regime. Otto von Habsburg was quickly coronated the Hungarian king to establish legitimacy for their Danubian plan. Enraging FDR, who believed that the Danube would become a democracy, souring ties to the states. Otto agreed to redraw the borders once the war was over, as seizing land was crucial for their long-term stability. D-Day commenced on June 6th as the Allies began pushing in France. Warsaw fell to the Soviets in July. Allied troops pushed deeper into Italy while Yugoslavia was fully liberated in August. A Greco-Slavic army took Istria and pushed into Venice. The city submitted to the invading army, but the Byzantines looted St. Mark's Cathedral, shipping back the stolen artifacts from the Fourth Crusade of 1204, retaking the Hippodrome horses. Germans retreated home to defend against the Soviets. Italy was fully liberated by mid-October. The Russians moved into Germany in November, while the Allies were still in France. Britain and America panicked, sending naval invasions to Denmark and the Netherlands to prevent the Baltics from becoming a Soviet lake. By the year's end, Symmachus took Pressburg, Prague, and Vienna, with Otto coronated as the king of the Danube. The Soviets took Berlin in January of 45, crewing a dash towards the Rhine. Symmachus conquered the rest of Austria and moved into Bavaria. Denmark and Holland were liberated in February, and the Allies made small inroads in Lower Saxony, but Russia occupied most of the Eastern Rhine. The entire German South was occupied by the Symmachus troops. South Tyrol, occupied by Byzantium, was transferred to the Danube without British or American consent. The German instrument of surrender was signed in March, ending the European front of World War II. In July, the Potsdam Agreement was signed, Negotiations were tense as the Soviets occupied most of Germany, and the Samakists made it clear they were not subservient to Britain or America. New Soviet regimes were established in Germany, Poland, and Czechoslovakia. The USSR annexed Konigsberg, which was renamed to Kaliningrad. France wanted to divide the Rhineland between itself, Belgium, and Holland. The Samakists supported this, but Britain and America refused. A Western-backed Rhineish state was instead formed while the Netherlands received the sliver of German lands. The Danubian monarchy was recognized, combining southern Germany, Austria, parts of Czechoslovakia, and Hungary. The eastern Hungarian borders were redrawn to better reflect demographics, and Hungary renounced their claims on Transylvania. It combined multiple autonomous provinces into a federal kingdom under the Habsburgs, and joined the Samakia. The Allies and the Samakists disagreed over Italy, as Yugoslavia and Byzantium wanted the kingdom to either join the Samakia or be occupied and carved up. Constantinople desperately wanted Sicily and the Greco parts of southern Italy, but were forced to back down after the UK accepted the transfer of South Tyrol. Yugoslavia was given Istria, Fiume, Zara, and Trieste, and their old lands were returned by Romania and Byzantium. The Byzantine conquest in Anatolia, the dissolvement of Bulgaria, and the annexation of Libya were all accepted. The rest of Libya was given to France, who acknowledged Roman suzerainty over the Levant. Byzantium made it clear that Palestine would not become a Jewish homeland, rejecting the Jewish territorial organization, angering America and Britain. Potential states for the Jews were drawn up, but no Jewish state was formed, as the JTO couldn't agree on a location. On September 2nd, Japan surrendered to the U.S. The American use of nuclear weapons prompted the Byzantines to begin their own nuclear program secretly. The 1946 Italian institutional referendum decided if Italy should remain a monarchy or become a republic. It was extremely close with the republicans winning. Byzantium and the Simakists denounced the result as fraudulent, blaming communist agents. Riots broke out and the republicans killed nine monarchists in Naples at a monarchist march. Byzantium offered King Umberto support in him destroying the northern communists. Umberto agreed, and much of the Italian military command backed the king. Within a week, the Byzantines used the Naples massacre's justification and marched in unopposed. They joined up with the southern Italian soldiers and seized Rome. Umberto was wary of a bloody civil war, and Britain warned them against this, causing him to offer to split Italy into a northern republic and a southern monarchy. Republicans complained internationally, but they would have elected a communist in a power without the South, so the West ignored them. After one week, the North accepted the partition. Rome remained the kingdom's capital, while Florence became the capital of the new Italian Republic. The kingdom fell under Byzantine sway and joined the Symmachia. 
British troops withdrew from Palestine in 1947, while 600,000 Byzantine soldiers moved in. They immediately came to blows with the Arabs, leading to the four-month-long Byzantine-Arab War, where 900,000 Palestinian Muslims fled. Byzantium promised the Jews autonomous zones so they stayed out of the conflict. Following the war, the Byzantines began a five-year resettlement campaign, bringing in 1.2 million Greeks, Russians, Ukrainians, Poles, and Bulgarians to the region, with Christians becoming the vast majority of the population. The 136,000 native Christians were given the same special privileges as the native Christians in Lebanon and Syria. Spain declared itself a monarchy once more, but the regime opposed Juan, Count of Barcelona, as he was too liberal. Byzantium pressured them to coronate a monarch, so Jaime, Duke of Segovia, was crowned. His ideology matched the phalangists, and he agreed that his 11-year-old son, Alfonso, Duke of Anjou and Cadiz, would marry a granddaughter of Franco in the future. The Byzantine Empire cemented itself as a global power. Imperial culture was militaristic, akin to Prussia. All men over 18 had to serve two years in the military. They needed to deter the Soviets and develop their military in the second strongest on the continent. The empire had around 34 million people, the 11th largest global population. Most of the Slavs colonized the new lands in Anatolia and the Levant. Cyrenaica and Jerusalem saw the largest Greek colonization efforts. Imperial culture developed beyond the Hellenic one of the early 20th century, as Roman became the ethnic identity for the Greeks as it had been in medieval times. First wave Russians formed an Anatolian hybrid, Romaic Russian culture known as Rus culture. Similar to ancient Rome, official documents were bilingual in Romaic and Russian. Citizenship also mirrored the classical days. Anyone could become a Roman citizen, but the Greeks here considered themselves true Romans. All Christians within the empire were granted citizenship as any form of Christianity was required for full citizenship. Military service and conversion were necessary for any non-citizen to become a full citizen. The Basileus had taken more power during the war. The facade of constitutionality was still present, but the parties approved by the emperor were run by different dynasties. Each demographic had their own approved dynasty representing them in the government. The financial treaty organization, consisting of these nations, was a multilateral economic union founded by Constantinople to create an independent economic system from the West. Byzantium gave considerable aid to Ethiopia, spurring modernization. Religion was crucial for the empire as it relied on devout Christians who made up about 90% of the empire, albeit across different forms and rites. Greek Orthodoxy was the official imperial religion, but all Christian branches were protected by the state and given privileges over non-Christians. Orthodox exarchates were established for the Russians, Serbs, and Bulgarians within the jurisdictions of Constantinople, Antioch, and Jerusalem. Two Soviet-backed uprisings erupted in Yugoslavia and Romania in 1947, but these failed. Byzantium shifted their domestic policy as a result. Any anti-imperial ideology such as communism, fascism, and republicanism were banned. Anyone suspected of supporting these destabilizing principles was blacklisted or arrested. The IIS, Imperial Intelligence Service, was created amidst growing tensions with America and the USSR as they wanted to root out foreign influence. The agency quickly uncovered and foiled the Soviet operation to destabilize Crimea. In 1948, the IIS discovered the West was forming an anti-communist alliance, so Constantinople acted quickly, creating the JDO, the Jerusalem Defense Organization. Its founding members were Byzantium, Yugoslavia, Romania, Armenia, Georgia, Assyria, Kurdistan, Mesopotamia, the Danubian Monarchy, South Italy, Spain, Portugal, and Ethiopia. Each member was staunchly traditional, anti-communist, and anti-democratic. France, the founder of the Little Entente, the JDO's ancestor, strengthened ties with the group but did not join. A few months later, the US created NATO. With friction rising between NATO, the RDO, and the communists, the Cold War had well and truly begun. Would Byzantium emerge victorious in the Cold War, or would the pressure from the West and the communists prove too much? 8,000 likes for part three. If you liked what you saw, like, share, and subscribe. Comment any video ideas you guys have, and if you want to get the maps and more, check out my Patreon or become a channel member. Click here to watch the HRE being revived after World War I. Goodbye.